Welcome everybody to Jesus Image. Let's all stand. Can we all stand together on our feet? It is truly a joy and an honor to welcome you to our house. My name is Sam Han. I'm one of the pastors here. And we, yeah, let's, let's really get excited for what God wants to do with us. Pastor Michael asked me to share about a dream I recently had. It was the day before your Irvine event. How many of you guys were at the Irvine event? Come on. So those of you guys who were there, you know what's about to go down. Before that event, I had a dream, and in the dream, I saw Pastor Michael standing on this stage, and he was preaching to literally this audience. I saw from the front all the way to the back. It was filled with people, and it's kind of funny, but he kept messing up the name of our church. He kept saying a different name, which was funny because at the Irvine event, he kind of messed it up too then. So I knew it was a prophetic fulfillment in some sense. But that wasn't what was so interesting about the dream. What was amazing about the dream was that I saw healings break out in the service. I saw young kids getting delivered. Yes, Lord. And so I don't share that with you lightly. I share that with you because we are in the fulfillment of a prophetic dream. You are here. God has called you and invited you here. This is more than just an event for our church in this region. God is doing something in history tonight in this room. So I want to invite you, if you are here, you are sick, you are broken, you're welcome to come to this place because Jesus is here in this place. And he's gonna touch you. He's gonna set you free. And so let that be the desire of our hearts today. Can we come before him and just seek him? The Bible said he had compassion on the crowd. Can we just go after his compassion tonight? Just say, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord. Maybe you're here, you're burnt out with ministry. Maybe you're here, you've been doing church a long time, but you're here because you need a touch from God. So let's just come to him and ask him for mercy. Let's just come before him and say, sweet Lord, have mercy on me. I'm broken, Lord, have mercy on me. And I invite you to forget about the crowd, to forget about who's speaking, who's singing. It's the Lord Jesus that we want tonight. And it's his presence that we desire tonight. So would you come, Lord? Here we are, your children. We're crying out to you, Lord. Come on, let's lift our voice together and say, come, Lord. Come and visit us in this place, Lord. We're hungry for you, Lord. We're desperate for you, Lord. Whoa. We desire your presence, Lord. We desire your face. Lord, we're hungry for you. We're desperate for you, Lord. You know how much people have gone through to get to this place. Just like the woman who is bleeding, there are some of us in this room that have exhausted every medical device, that have exhausted every physical opinion. And if we can just touch the hem of your garment, we will be healed tonight. If we can just touch you. Lord, I believe that is our faith tonight. Would you just lift your hands? I just feel an electricity in the air in our hands. The Lord Jesus, He is here. Would you just reach out and just say, Lord, help me to believe. Some of you have been to so many events, but tonight this is not an event. Get lost in the presence of Jesus. Come, Lord, we welcome you, Lord. We worship you in this place, Lord. Come on, would you just lift your voice once again and just dedicate this room. Sanctify your heart before the Lord. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, we love you. Come and anoint every hand in this place. Lord, come and anoint every person in this room. Tonight, let there be an impartation of healing miracles on every hand in Jesus' name that, Lord, what has started here will spread for the next 20 years in this region. And, Lord, we just declare before you that you are king, 
We are your servants, Lord. We have come to serve you. We love you, and we welcome you, King Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.
Every eye closed, every hand lifted. Let's worship the Lord.
Close your eyes where you are as we stand in the holy presence of Jesus, who's enthroned on our praise. And you inhabit our praise, O oh Lord. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. And we stand, Lord with quiet hearts where the Lord is in his temple and let all the earth be silent and we declare Lord tonight that there are none like you none beside you none in heaven none on the earth none under the earth the earth is your footstool yet Lord we are the sheep of your pasture and so we love you tonight holy Jesus blessed are you worthy are you of every ounce of praise and worship Every voice, you are worthy of our praise, Lord. Every heartbeat, you are worthy of and more. And we give you all glory. Just right where you are right now, would you begin just singing in the spirit? Just let that river flow. That Jesus said from your innermost being would flow rivers, rivers of living water. And he said if we would drink of this river that we would never thirst again. Take the next two minutes and just sing from the depths of your being. Just get lost tonight, get lost, close your eyes. Forget about everything but the Lord Jesus.
every voice tell him from the bottom of your heart. Your face is all I see. Fill this house with worship tonight. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Sing that again. Again, lift your voices just a little bit more. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face again lift your voices just a little more now oh everything in us. prayer tonight. Please light the fire. Yes, Lord. That once burned bright and clear. Come on, make that your prayer. Replace the light the fire. Oh Lord, please light the fire. In every heart, Lord, in every heart. That once burned bright and clear. Replace the Sing that again, and you carry it, church, every voice now. Oh, Lord, please light the fire. Oh, Lord, please light the fire. That once burned bright and Hallelujah. Replace the
sing that again. Lift your voices more. Make this happen all over Southern California. Oh, Lord, please light the fire. Answer our prayer. That You're beautiful, the instruments and every voice. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Beautiful Jesus. Your face is all I see. And when your eyes are depths of our spirits. Sing that again. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. We love your presence, Lord. We love your presence. Your face, it's all I see. And when you're Wonderful, wonderful Savior. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Holy Father, we've come to adore. We've come to worship. We are blown away by the invitation that we can come and approach the throne of grace with boldness because of the holy blood of your worthy Son, Jesus. So, Lord, by faith tonight, I plead the blood. I apply the blood over every square inch of this property, over every single person in this room, over everyone in the overflow. I plead the blood over everyone listening and watching around the world. Our testimony is of the blood. And tonight, Lord, may we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony is of you, not of ourselves. And we declare that Jesus Christ has overcome, that his cross has conquered every prince and power, and that you, Lord Jesus, carry and hold the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every knee shall bow. Even in this room tonight, knees will bow. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you tonight for your presence. We thank you in advance. I need, I need the house to agree with me. We thank you in advance for every soul that will be saved, for every lukewarm heart that will come to you. We thank you in advance for every sickness that will go in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for filling your people afresh tonight, including me. Fill us afresh with the blessed power of the Holy Spirit. Why don't you ask him tonight? Say, Lord, fill me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit tonight that Jesus would be magnified that Jesus would be magnified. And everyone said? Everyone said? Can we give the Lord praise tonight? Blessed be your name. Oh, blessed be your name. Come on, lift the praise. Oh, 
Lift the praise. Blessed be your name. 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 Blessed be your name forever and ever and ever. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Oh, I feel the power of God. Worthy is the King. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus, open up. Oh, keep playing, keep playing. Open up, open up the everlasting doors. And be lifted up the ancient gates, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He's the Lord. He's the Lord. He's the Lord. He is Adonai. He is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord strong and mighty in battle. The Lord of hosts. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. And worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. You're not tired of worshiping the Lord, I hope. Blessed be your name forever and ever and ever and ever. I hear the words of the Apostle John. He was grieving because there was none found worthy to break the seal and open the scroll. And he heard a voice, sorrow not. There is one worthy. I said, there is one worthy. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the root of Jesse, David's seed. He has overcome. He died and is alive forevermore. Death has been destroyed. Death has been destroyed. And, and the grave has been robbed of its power. And there are none like you, Lord. Now lift your hands to the Lord. Wonderful Holy Spirit, help us tonight. Help us, carry us, teach us to yield to your voice the best we know how and magnify the name of Jesus like we've never known. Hmm. Let tonight be a seed for this house and for this region. Let a wild fire of the Holy Ghost just burn through this region. May it burn all the way to Florida and all the way to New York. I'm just going to follow the Holy Spirit. May the Bible Belt come alive in Jesus' name. May religion, may religion die with the beautiful renewed vision of the man from Galilee. Blessed be your name. Can we lift one more shot of praise? Yes. Love you, Lord. That was a B minus. Lift a praise. A pause. Lord. well <laughs> all is well I wonder if you can carry that without the band can we lift one more
look someone in the eye, tell them they're going to meet Jesus all over again tonight, and then you can be seated. Oh, thank you, Lord. You happy tonight? Yeah. Babe. Thank you for being here. It is such an honor to be here. I want to thank Pastor Sam for having us, your entire family, and this entire house. Can we thank the Lord for Grace Ministries? <laughs> Let's please honor them. Thank you, Lord. Such a privilege. Thank you for your heart. I had the joy of meeting his father this morning, senior pastor of this amazing church who has seen such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, such a missional church. They've sent missionaries. How many full-time missionaries from the house right now? 350 full-time from this church. That's beautiful. And uh, some have given their lives for the gospel, and uh, it's an honor to be here. So thank you so much, and I believe the Lord is knitting our hearts in the spirit. It's always nice to come into a building where the pastor had a dream about you coming before, before you got there. It does help your confidence. <laughs> Aren't you happy to be in the Lord's presence tonight? I... Um, you're going to hear from Jessica in just a moment, but babe, would you stand up? My wife Jess is here. Yeah. And also, some dear friends. Christy Brent is here. I think Nick's here. Wow, the whole crew's here. Brent family, would you stand up? Can we thank the Lord for the Brent family? And uh, it's such an honor to have you here, Christy. Christy and her husband Brian, who's gone on to be with the Lord, they have pioneered an amazing movement called the Circuit Riders, based in Huntington Beach. And I had the uh, joy and privilege of, gosh, I don't know, maybe 10 years more. I don't know how long ago. How, when did we start? When did I start coming to the garage? Oh gosh, yeah, we've been about nine years ago. Nine years ago. And what they've pioneered and plowed here is really beautiful. And I know Brian is in heaven cheering us on, interceding, and praying that this will be a wilder meeting than any of us are comfortable with. Yeah. May it be. But uh, Christy, actually, would you come up? I'm going to have you pray before I preach the gospel. Can we welcome Christy, please, in honor? Brian preached here. Uh, the Bible says to on give honor to whom honor is due, and they have stayed the course. And they're my dear friends, and, and I want her to pray a blessing over this night and over what the Lord wants to do uh, in this region. So, Christy, would you pray? Let's all stand, please. Lord, we just are in joy to be in your presence. We're humbled to be in this house that has such a heritage in this community and such a far reach across the nations. And we just say thank you, Jesus, that you have heard the prayers of this church. We say thank you for the plans that you have declared over them and what you will fulfill through them. Yes, Lord. We're so humbled to be here. Father, we're just here because we want to encounter you and we want to see you, we want to worship you, and we want to know you. And I just pray, Father, that there would be a transactional encounter tonight for every person that is here. Yes, Lord. 
I pray for prophetic ears to be open tonight, Jesus. I pray for a move of your spirit to be magnified and moved in this church. Yes, Lord. We pray, Father, that the mission's heart would go crazy in this church over the young generation in Gen Z, yes, Gen Lord. Alpha. There would be so many missional kids that want to go to the nations. Lord, we just pray, Father, you would elevate this church as a place that shines your love across this whole region, Jesus. And Lord, we just pray for every piece of this body that needs to be healed, that you would come and display your glory, Jesus. Pour out. Lord, we just posture ourselves ready tonight to hear the word of truth. We pray you would gird us up to walk it out. Amen, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let Christine know you love her. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm going to preach the gospel here, and I'm going to ask that uh, you find your seat and stay in it until I'm done, unless it's an emergency. Going to hell is an emergency, so I suggest you <laughs> hear what I have to say. <laughs> How many of you feel the Lord's presence tonight? I certainly do. And this is our home. I don't mean this building. I mean His presence is our home. And we must get to the place where we know how to be in His presence. Too many churches see His presence as being foreign, and His presence is our home. So let's pray. Let's quickly find your seats, please. Lord, your word says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Your word says that I purposed or determined to know nothing among you except Christ and Him crucified. Your word says that I did not come to you with the wisdom and the persuasive words of men, but in the power of God, that our faith would not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. The cross, Jesus and Him crucified, is the power of God. As I preach your word, let the eyes of every heart be opened. And may the authority of Jesus Christ rule and reign in this room. And may people flood to the feet of Jesus tonight without hesitation. May they see you as you are, the loving shepherd, the loving redeemer, who calls us to you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for doing your work. May every heart that is hard be softened. Is your word not like a hammer, the scripture says? that breaks the rock to pieces. Break every hard heart with love for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Would you say amen? amen. Would you take your Bibles to Psalm 32? If you don't have one. Uh, can look at your phone, just don't jump on social. <laughs> I feel the Lord's nearness, and I couldn't make it to service on time tonight because I wasn't, I had such a migraine, I, I questioned whether or not I could even preach. I walked in, 
Uh, I've been suffering with these since I was a little boy. And I came in here, and as I started to worship, I felt the presence of God. I feel wonderful right now. The wonderful thing about serving the Lord is that it's not our strength that does the job. It doesn't work. So we can bring our weakness to Jesus. His strength begins to flow. So I want you to look down at verse 1 in Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. This is penned by a man who slept with his friend's wife and then had one of his best friends killed, a man by the name of Uriah. This is penned by David. Possibly tonight you, you're sitting in that seat thinking, I've, I've prayed the prayer before, I've, I've been to an altar. And as I've said around the world for almost 20 years now, altars don't save, neither do prayer cards. Only Jesus saves. It is quite possible to come up to an altar call and leave hell bound if you do not meet Jesus. I've come to challenge the core of your faith tonight. Um, that's not my prayer that it offends you. But the scripture says, make your election sure. I pastored in this region for years. And one thing I can tell you is there are many people who sit in the pews of Southern California who do not know Jesus. They know church, they know events, they know small groups. They know growth tracks. There are many pastors who are not born again, preaching in this region and all over the world because they've never truly met the man from Galilee. Salvation, friends, is not a prayer. Salvation is not an initiative. Salvation is a person. His name is Jesus. You say, how can you say that? There was an old man named Simeon who'd been fasting and praying, waiting for the arrival of the son of David, the Messiah. And one day, baby Jesus comes to the temple to be presented, and Simeon, this old man who had dedicated his life to prayer and fasting, sees a baby a person and says something that changed the game forever. And this is what he said when he looked at the person of the Lord Jesus. He said, Father, now I can go on, I can go home, for my eyes have seen your salvation. As he's holding a baby, he declares, salvation is a person. Salvation is a someone, not a something. So here David begins to talk about, in verse 1, the blessedness of being forgiven, the blessedness of having his sin covered. Look at verse 2 now. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. The worst thing you can do tonight is hide. Our lives are the proof of our salvation. And I, I, I tell our students in our church this all the time. Our attendance in the meeting is not the proof of our salvation. His residence in us is the proof of salvation. 
So here David writes, there's a blessing for those in whose spirit there's no deceit. In other words, there's a blessing for those who do not try to act like they are righteous when at the core they are not. There's a blessing for those who are tired of wearing a mask. And when we wear the mask, it's because we are not seeing Jesus rightly. What did he say? The Son of Man has come to seek and save those who are lost. If you come to Jesus tonight, or when you come to Jesus tonight, you can rest assured that his love has been proven. Proven. For the scripture says in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. That word so is not speaking of an amount. It's not speaking of this great big love, of course, it, it, it can mean that, but the word actually means in this way, God has loved us. And he shows us what it looks like to be loved. For God so loved the world that he offered, he gave, not just handed over, but offered his own son to die. This is the way that God expressed his love by coming to die for us. We should give him praise because that is a beautiful thing. Now I want you to hear verse three. And I wonder how many hearts feel this way tonight. How many hearts watching around the world feel what I'm about to read. And you don't have to stay this way. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. In other words, when I refused to confess my sin, my physical body felt it. I woke up in the morning and not wanting to get up. I woke up in the morning with the desire to go back to bed. I never feel well physically. I don't feel at peace. My body is not at rest. David felt his unconfessed sin in his bone marrow, in the core of his being. Verse four, for day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality or my life was turned into the drought of summer. I hear people all the time say, I'm just in the dry season. Friends, how can you be in a dry season if there's a river that lives inside of you? The dry season is not for the saint. The Bible says it's the rebellious who dwell in a parched and dry land. If things are dry, it is not God's fault. Jesus said, from your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He spoke of a living water that if we would drink of it, we would never thirst again. In fact, he said, if you drink, it will bubble up. It will gush forth. It will move. If there's dryness in your life, come to Jesus tonight. Maybe tonight you feel the heavy hand of God. You feel the conviction of your sin. You feel the conviction of the porn. You feel the conviction of you not being able to control your eyes. You feel the conviction of your unforgiveness, the conviction of your anger, the conviction of your greed, the conviction of the perversion. You feel the conviction of sin. Friends, sin is not something you do. Sin at the core is a heart that says, I will not lay my life down at the feet of Jesus. Sin is looking to another tree. Sin is seeking wisdom and life outside of the tree of life. Jesus himself that's the hand you feel upon you tonight. And that hand is upon you with heaviness because God loves you. Hell was not created, the scripture says, for us. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. And the Bible says that hell enlarges herself, unfortunately, because millions upon millions go day after day. Let the heavy hand of God heal you tonight. 
He's so near. You know, nights like tonight, they just don't happen every day. The human mind, the fallen mind, tempts us to believe that I can come to Jesus tomorrow. Backsliding isn't even recognized in the heart of God. It's not, it's not even recognized in many parts of the world. It's unknown. Living a life of victory and defeat and victory and defeat and victory and defeat, that's not what the Scripture teaches. Of course, we sin. But bondage is not the inheritance of the saints. Habitual sin is not the inheritance of the saints. As a great man once said, if I have to wait until I die to be free from sin, then I have made death my Savior and not the Lord. Unfortunately, in this, region, in this region and all over the world, the church has been lied to. Jesus destroyed sin. Destroyed it. He didn't just break the yoke. He destroyed the yoke. Verse 5, listen to this. Now the tables turn. And this is what's going to happen here in just a few moments. I acknowledged my sin to you. In other words, I confessed my sin to you. And my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. David said, I know what to do. I'm tired of the shame. I'm tired of the condemnation. So I will confess what you already know, Lord. There's no point in hiding from the Lord tonight. The scripture says, has he who formed the eye, can he not see you? Has he who planted the ear, can he not hear you? In our fallen nature, we are programmed to hide from the Lord like Adam and Eve. And the Lord comes walking by asking this question. Where are you? Where have you been? Adam, you missed your appointment this morning. I miss walking with you in the cool of the day. Where have you been? Reinhard Bunke once said, Adam purposed to live without God, but God came looking for Adam and purposed not to live without Adam. Don't hide in your churches. Don't hide at Jesus' image. Don't hide by viewing enough Christian videos. Come into the light tonight. And he says, when he confessed, you, Lord, forgave the iniquity of my sin, not just the behavior, but you went inside of me and you purged me deep on the inside. That's the only way to be truly free is for there to be an internal cleansing. The scripture says that when we confess our sin, he, the Lord, is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Lord tonight will come in into your innermost being and deal with the root of the issues that are bringing this shame, these dry bones, this drought-like feeling that is not for you. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. There's a time when the Lord will not be found. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone under the sound of my voice. You never know what could happen on the way home. I'm not trying to scare you, but this is the truth. Eternity is not in front of us. It runs parallel with us. In a single moment, we could step into that realm and here David discovered that there was a time when the Lord might be found. 
And we are in that time now. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not come near him. Listen carefully. David declares to the Lord, You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall, you shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Maybe you feel unprotected. Maybe you feel exposed tonight. Maybe you feel weak. Jesus wants to be your hiding place. Jesus wants to sing songs over you of deliverance. And your song will be a song of deliverance tonight. A few days ago, we were at the Send in Reading, Pennsylvania. And I said something to those young people. I said, Jesus doesn't change your life when you come to him. And they all stared at me like, stone this guy. What is he talking about? <laughs> it's true. He doesn't change our lives. He does much better. He replaces our lives. He doesn't improve our lives. We die, we're buried, and raised again. It's much better than a change. Because a changed Michael is hell-bound. A changed Michael is still not good enough. There must be a brand new creation that comes forth. And that's what the Bible promises. That old things are passed away. And all things become new. The scripture says, though my sin be like scarlet, I shall be white as snow. Jesus is the firstborn of a new creation. And he doesn't want to change you tonight. He wants to, to, you to, by faith, go into the ground after being nailed to the cross. And he will rip you up out of that tomb. And you will come forth in newness of life tonight. Brand new. I said brand new. And those chains that held you, those struggles that hold you, Jesus has the power to fry them in his presence. So my question to you tonight is not, have you prayed a prayer? Because he's much more than a sin eraser. My question is this, have you given Jesus your entire life? Or have you made Jesus part of your life? I want you to ponder that for a moment. What fruit are you consistently seeing in your life that is proof of his saving work and power? The word salvation speaks of a wholeness, an entire healing of our spirit, soul, and body. Proof of the Christian life is the life of Christ in us and through us. Do you hate sin tonight? Or does sin, listen, does sin have its grip on you? Are you tired of the cycle? Do you feel like sin is enslaving you? You don't have to leave that way. And the Bible says, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You can leave free tonight. It's not just my prayer for you. It's his prayer for you. Jesus has come close to take the entirety of your being. Only he is worthy to carry our lives forever. And only he can be trusted. With every head bowed and eye closed. Tonight, the Lord comes in his love. And I want to speak to two groups of people with no one moving. The first group, you need to be delivered of sin. You need to be set free. You want to know what it's like to walk in the light of his presence. 
You're tired of being a child of the world. And you want to walk as a child of God and live in the kingdom of light. This is what he promises. You want to offer your life completely to the Lord Jesus. That's the first group. The second group are those of you who once burned with holy fire. You walked with the Lord. You loved the scriptures. You loved to worship the Lord. You loved the fellowship of his people. And the world slowly crept in. That fire that was once in your heart has grown dim. I want you to hear the word of the Lord tonight. Jesus told the loveless church that if they did not return to their first love, he called it a fall from the great heights. First, losing first love, friends, is not a weakness. It's a tragic fall. Attaining first love is to live at the heights of the greatest heights. And Jesus said, for those of us who grow lukewarm, he will vomit us from his mouth. There's only one way home from there, to come to the consuming fire and ask him to light your heart on fire once again. With every head bowed and eye closed, if you're one of those two groups, I just want you to put your hand up in boldness tonight. Do not hesitate. Thank you, Father. I want everyone to stand without hesitation. Everyone stand if you raised your hand. Or everyone stand, everyone in the house. If you raised your hand or you wish you did, I want you to get down here quickly, right away. Come down and offer your life to the Lord Jesus as, as a sacrifice. Let's give the Lord praise. Oh, come on, give the Lord praise. Look at this. Look at this. Thank you, Lord, young and old. Church, give the Lord praise tonight. Little kids, thank you, Lord. Look, they're already, you, you need to give the Lord praise because in heaven there is a celebration going on. Thank you, Lord. Look at them. Every age, every color. The power of God's already falling. Oh, we give you praise, Lord. There's still time for you out there. You know, there was a day where I didn't think it was right to beg people to come to the Lord. But that day's gone in my heart. If you need Jesus, you get down here tonight. I don't care if you're a missionary or a pastor. There are many preachers who've never met him. You get down here. Look, they're in the aisles. Come to Jesus tonight. Come, come to the one who loves you and prove that love for you. We'll wait for you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask that everyone in their seats stand in honor of this holy moment. Everyone stand. This is a blessed time. I wish you could see and hear what I'm seeing and hearing right now. Some of these people are shaking under the power of God. They're weeping, deep groans in their hearts that only the Holy Spirit can release. Come, man, come. Can we give the Lord praise one more time? Don't you love the gospel? Would you stretch your hands towards these precious people? This is very different tonight. It's very different. The moment they got up here, the Holy Spirit started falling on some of them. We love you, Lord. I want us to repeat this out loud with boldness.
Heavenly Father, with boldness, louder again. Heavenly Father, forgive my sin. I confess my sin to you. Wash me. Cleanse me. Heal me. Heal my heart. Heal my mind. Heal my thoughts. Tonight, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. My sin is against you. Cleanse my soul. I offer my life to you. And I believe that you, Jesus Christ, are the Holy Son of God. That you were born of the Virgin. That you lived a perfect and holy life. That you suffered that you died on the cross and shed your holy blood to set me free and take my penalty. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your blood. Jesus, I believe that you died, that you were buried three days later raised from the dead. And tonight, you are alive forevermore. Jesus Christ is the risen Son of God. And that you are seated at the right hand of the Father and are coming back again to rule and reign. Find me ready, Lord Jesus. Teach me to love you. Teach me to walk with you. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Come and live in my heart. Save my soul. I renounce the world. I renounce the devil himself. I renounce my sin. I renounce my own will. I I repent repent and turn to you. I I trust you you. with my forever. forever. I am yours. yours. You are mine. mine. In Jesus' mighty name. name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. I want you to remain standing, those of you in your seats, those of you who came forward, if you're able. I know many of you are being touched by the Lord. Would you look at me, please, in the eye if you're able? If not, the Lord's touching you. Just do your best to listen. Your days of defeat are over. It doesn't mean you're never going to screw up again. It just means it's not going to be natural. It's not going to feel right. It's going to be like swimming upstream against the grain. That is God's heart for you. That's what the Word of God teaches. You you can live a victorious life. And this is how you do that. Listen carefully. That's why we gave you those pamphlets. You can look through them when you get back to your seat. Number one, spend time with Jesus every day. We call that prayer. You, uh, You say, I don't know how to pray. Nobody does when they start. And you're on an eternal learning curve when it comes to prayer. You'll be praying in heaven. And you'll be learning in heaven how to pray. Spend time with the Lord. You say, how do I do it? Jesus made it so easy. Listen to me. This is not a robotic thing for me. This is true. I want you to get it because this is what did it in my life. Jesus said, when you pray, go into your room and close the door. How hard is that? Most rooms have doors. Walk in and shut it. Okay, step one, shut the door. And then he says, my father who dwells in secret... When you go into secret, my Father dwells there. He will reward you openly. That speaks of the abiding life. Your life will become a life of fellowship. Number one, pray. 
If you don't know what you're doing, say, Holy Spirit, I don't know what I'm doing. And he'll say, perfect, now I can help you. The ones he can't help are the ones who think they know. Just tell them every day. In fact, in 20 years, just keep saying, I don't know what I'm doing. He loves to work with that. Number two, read your Bible. I am I'm deeply concerned, but I'm going to see it shift before I go home to be with the Lord. We will be lovers of, the G, of Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. Not our own Jesus. Read your Bible a lot. I say that unapologetically. I'm saying it clearly and boldly tonight. Read your Bible. Eat your Bible. Feast on your Bible. Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That means reading the scriptures is a matter of life and death. He said, man doesn't live by bread alone. You will die spiritually if you do not feast upon the word of God. Read your Bible. If you don't have one, we'll help you get one. I'm sure this church can help you get one. There are wonderful pastors all over this crowd. It's, we'll find you a Bible. And if you want one bad enough, you can find one, okay? <laughs> Number three, get baptized in water. That is not a suggestion. That is a commandment. A man named Watchman Nee once said this. People who confess the Lord Jesus and refuse to get baptized are like those who are living but have a dead body tied to them. And they would use that to torture people years ago. They would tie dead bodies to living people and the infection of the dead body would eventually kill the, li the living person. And that's what it's like trying to live the Christian life without allowing the scalpel of the waters of baptism to destroy that old man in the water and cut us off as the Bible says, from this perverse generation. Go into the waters, okay? Get baptized here. Uh, don't baptize yourself. It's a new trend. I don't understand it. It's just not in the scripture, all right? <laughs> you can't baptize yourself. It, it defeats the purpose, but th that's another teaching. All right. Get baptized, okay? You've got all this huge beach over here. You've got pools. Have a pastor. Somebody baptize you, okay? All right, number four, number four, you must commit your heart to a people in God's presence. That is called church. If you're waiting for the perfect one, you will never find one. They don't exist, okay? There are no perfect churches. So rather than be offended by the imperfections that we ourselves have as well, just get into the mud with imperfect people and worship Jesus. Okay? Don't attend. Do not attend church. Give your heart. Get rooted in a church. There's a big difference. Worship Jesus. Offer your life with a people. Okay. Number five, share Jesus. Now, here's the deal. You're going to do it tonight. Before you leave tonight, before you get in your car, when all of y'all leave, when you leave this building, and that goes for everyone here. I'm gonna ask you to text or call somebody and tell them what happened, what happened to you tonight. You must not touch the glory, and this is a way that something you can do, I should say, that keeps you from touching the glory. And Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. That's a scary thing, but it's a beautiful thing that one day we will be declared before our Father. What a wonderful thing. Lastly. And this is what I want to pray now. Jesus made a promise. This is what he said. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. There are people in your life, your mother, your father, your siblings, your friends, who need to know the freedom you found tonight. And you can't do it on your own, and you don't have to. It is by the Holy Spirit. Think for a moment that Jesus made a promise that you would walk with the same person he walked with when he ministered here on the earth, the blessed person of the Holy Spirit. Imagine that you get to minister in the same power as the Lord Jesus. How many of you want that? How many of you want that out in your seats? Okay, now, 
I'm going to ask, no more piano, just fill it up with a pad. I want everyone to stretch their hands. If you're in these two front rows, I'm actually going to ask that you put your hands on a few of them. Our team and pastors here are going to, to just put their hands on you. And when they do, I do believe that the Lord Jesus will pour his spirit upon many of you. Can you in your seats just begin praying in the spirit here for a moment? Those of you who have come forward, you don't need to pray right now. Just receive, like little children coming for bread. Father, you told us to ask. The Lord Jesus said that we were to ask you for the Holy Spirit. You said, how many of you fathers, when a child asks for a fish, would give a serpent or a piece of bread, a stone? How much more will my Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Jesus, stretch forth your hand, I pray, and begin to fill Fill these people, fill this house with the power of the Holy Spirit. Clothe them now. Let the gifts of the Spirit move with freedom and power. Raise up missionaries, raise up preachers, raise up pastors and teachers and worship leaders. Raise up evangelists, I pray in Jesus' name. Raise up the prophetic in this house. Release the gifts of the Holy Spirit tonight, I pray, for Jesus' sake. Do it, Lord, I pray. Just praying the Spirit at you there in your seats. The Lord is touching them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Fill them. Aaron, come here, bud. Keep praying, keep praying. The Lord's moving. Fill them. Bring Aaron. Come up here, young man. Keep praying out loud in the spirit, everyone in your seats. Those of you who've come forward, just receive. Stretch your hands towards this young man. Father, use him for your name's sake. Clothe him. Release him. Launch him into his destiny tonight. May the blessed power of the Holy Spirit come upon him. Use him for your glory. Blessed be your name. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Carla, bring this girl up here, right here, in the gray. Aaron, help her up here. Come up here. Keep praying, keep praying. The Lord's moving. He's touching these young people. Lord Jesus, launch her. Send her. Send her to those who need to hear about Jesus. The fire of the Holy Spirit come upon her, I pray. Fill her tonight in Jesus' name. Pray out loud, pray out loud in the Spirit. Blessed are you, O Lord. 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 Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Strong and mighty. Strong and mighty. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Keep praying. 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 Blessed are you, O Lord. Forever and ever and ever and ever. Fill them. Genuine empowerment of the Spirit tonight.
Man, there is such a heavy, heavy anointing. Fill them. Fill them from head to toe. You know, you're in your seat right now, just receive, just receive. Just ask the Lord to touch you. You don't need me to lay hands on you. You ask the Lord to touch you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord. Aaron, Aaron, give me that young boy in the glasses there. Keep praying just a little more, just a little more. The Lord's not done yet. I see a mighty, mighty plan. Stay there. Lord Jesus, fill him tonight with the power of your spirit. Now you ask him to use you and be specific. Lord, take this little life and let the fire of heaven fall upon him. Make much of this life, I pray. And rip every chain off his thoughts. Let the fire of the Spirit cleanse and fill him all-consuming fire. Holy, holy, holy. This is not just for these people up front. This is for the entire house tonight. Worthy are you, O Lord. Worthy are you, O Lord. Worthy are you, O Lord. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. Keep blessing him. Keep blessing him. I'm telling you, I feel the heavy, heavy, weighty presence of the Lord. Worthy are you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. If you're under the age of 25 and you want the Lord to use you in full-time ministry, lift your hand. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Look to the Lord Jesus. Father, release the power of the Holy Spirit upon these young people in Jesus' name. Wonderful Holy Spirit, come upon them and take their life all you have to do right now is yield and surrender. Offer your life. Take their life. Send them to different cities throughout America. Send them to the nations of the world. Come, Holy Spirit. I can't get to all of them. You can. Touch them. You can. I trust you, Lord, to touch them. Encounter them like you encountered me as a little boy. Undeniable, undeniable encounter with the Holy Spirit tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for this young girl that has Jesus as King on her sweatshirt. Come. Come. I give you all the glory. But God's going to use her mightily to confound the wise. To confound the wise with her fiery love for Jesus to silence the mockers. Blessed Lord, take this life. 
Everyone pray in the spirit. Just stretch your hands. Take this life. Use her. Use her. Let the blessed anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon her undeniably. Oh Lord, stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Put her on like a glove. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord use you. May he break off every doubting voice. May all the confusion go. And may you be released like a stone in a slingshot into your destiny, young lady. May you run with boldness and a broken heart for the lost. Oh, let the flame of heaven consume her tonight. Ask him to use you now. Do it now. Jesus, take her life. That's my prayer. Take her life. Take her life and consume it with your reality. Take this life. Never the same. Never the same. Holy, holy, holy. Can we all lift our hands to the Lord? Father, you've heard our prayer. We sense your spirit resting upon these young people, upon the entire crowd. Have us, have us, have us. I was going to pray for the sick during communion, and I still am, but I feel the Lord's wonderful healing touch on this side of me. Just, just, just for a moment, just for a moment. There are many of you on my right who feel like a heat, like an electricity going through your body. You've wondered, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? This is so different. That's the power of the Lord. You just, just receive, that's all. You don't have to do anything. Just look to Jesus. Heal your people, Lord. Touch us. Touch us, I pray. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'm going to ask everyone who's come forward, just to, if you're able, to stand up and go back to your seat in the presence of God. These are going to need some help here. Go on back to your seat quickly. In just a moment, we're all going to receive communion together. Guys, can we give the Lord praise? Oh, thank you, Lord. We're going to receive communion together, and then we're going to pray for the sick. And we will see the wonders of God. I said we will see the wonders of God. Do you agree with that? We will see the wonders of God as we come to the table of the Lord. Can we thank the Lord one more time? Jess, would you come, baby? Would you just welcome Jess for a few moments, please? Thank you, Lord. Wow. Um, I have the honor of taking the offering tonight. You guys got quiet. I know many times when you come into a service like this, you go, okay, worship altar call, offering, but it's all an act of worship unto God. And just speaking from the heart, um, this is our third leg of the tour, correct? <laughs> um, we have another one coming in Northern California, Sacramento and Redding. We're coming for you soon in October. And um, this is a holy sacrifice for us and our team. And before we even had really anything besides just a dream in our heart, 
we took a step in faith as a ministry. And we all, this that we see here, the cross that is here, we bring this all the way from Florida. Our team drives all the way because we have to take the cross wherever we go, amen? And these cameras that you see and everything you see here, um, it wasn't free. <laughs> I wish it was, but it wasn't. And that was something that we sowed in faith because we believe that God is gonna rock this region. We really do, we feel it so strong. And every time that we're here, I just feel it so much stronger that God is getting ready to pour forth his spirit upon California like never before. And we love this region. We used to live here, as Michael said, we used to pastor here and this wasn't happening um, when we used to pastor here in California. And I'm sharing all this because we as a ministry at Jesus Image, we took a step of faith and not all the money has come in yet for our camera equipment. It was $350,000. Cameras are very expensive, but we had to purchase that just to be able to come on tour because we have a church and a ministry school in Orlando, Florida, and we cannot, the cameras cannot be two places at one time. But that was a step in faith, and I'm believing that God is gonna bring that money in, amen? If it was your camera equipment that you believe in God for, you would have clapped a little bit harder. I'm believing that God is gonna bring all that money in. Okay. Because there's something about giving to Jesus. Even when you don't have everything figured out, it's an act, it's a sacrifice, it's an offering unto him. And if you'll turn to Malachi, this is my favorite passage. It's, it's just, oh man, growing up the way we did, uh, we were giving and giving tithe and offering as little kids. It was just something that we did. And, but I always did it because I, I knew that it's what the Bible said. But when, it became, when I became a grown-up, I really started to say, I want to see it for myself, Lord. I want to see it because, yes, I know that my dad and my mom and my pastors, my leaders, they taught me to give. But I want to see it for myself. You know, it's different when it's your parents' money versus your own money, right? I was like, I want to see it for myself. And God, really, the Holy Spirit took me to Malachi 3. And I just started to meditate on this verse, and it's still one of my favorites to this day. If you'll turn to Malachi 3, I'm gonna start reading at verse six. It says, I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why your descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God, yet you have cheated me? But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and the offerings that are due to me. Do you hear that? It says tithes and the offerings. Still quiet. Thank you. I, one of our Jesus School students is in the room. He's agreeing with me. Thank you, Brennan. Your tithes and your offerings, yes, tithe, that's a tenth. It's your first fruit, and that belongs to the Lord, but also your offerings belong to the Lord because whatever you hold from him, you really don't trust him with. Giving is really about trusting God. That's really what it is. And if you don't trust him with your money, then you don't trust him with your life. It says, you have cheated me with tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do so, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great, you will not have enough room to take it in. I love this side of God. Try it, put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. I love this passage so much for so many reasons, but I love that side of the Lord where he's saying, try me, put me to the test. You will never be able to outgive God. 
But it's really important that we understand because yes, there has been manipulation in, in offerings and giving, of course, but we don't give just so we can get back. But God is so good because he loves us so much that he wants to bless his children. We give because we get to. We give because we get to give to Jesus. I remember one time, not too long ago, it was Veterans Day and I was just walking with some friends and I saw an, an old gentleman and he had a hat on that said that he was a veteran and I just wanted to bless him. So I just went over and I grabbed some money from my purse and I said, sir, I just want to bless you. I honor you. I honor you for what you did for our country. I just want to give you some money. And he got really proud and he became a little mean to me and said, in front of my friends who were watching in a distance, I was outside in a crowded place. To be honest, I felt really embarrassed. He said, I don't want your money. I said, oh no, sir, I, I don't mean to be rude. I just want to honor you today for what you've done for our freedom. Please take this. It's just something little just to say thanks. And again, no, I don't want your money. And God is not like that. Isn't it such a good feeling that we can come to the Lord and say, God, I want to give you my money, my heart, my time, my marriage, my everything, Jesus. He'll never make you feel less than. He's going, yes, bring it all to me because that shows me that you trust me, Jess. And that's the kind of heart that I want to have for the Lord. And yes, I'm going to say it again. I am believing that every need that we have already sowed as a ministry will come in because we are taking a step of faith by doing this. And by that, God always rewards your hearts when you go, you know what? Like, we didn't have it all figured out, but we said, we, we're, we're going by faith to that region. And our team here on the, uh, that's in California from Florida can tell you we have already seen God move in such a powerful way back at home since we as, as a ministry have taken a step of faith and said we're going to sow into that region. God is providing all of our needs in Florida right now because we took a step when we didn't have it all figured out and didn't have the money. But that shows faith and I want to have faith like that, don't you? So let's just pray. Dear Jesus, it is our honor and joy to give to you, Lord. You gave everything to us, Lord. You gave your life on the cross for us. You held nothing back, God. So Holy Spirit, I just ask right now, just right now, you'll start speaking to people that you will speak what they are meant to give, Lord. And I ask God that we will just be obedient to you, Lord. That's it. And even those watching online, there's just even people watching online that God is speaking to right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in this region. We're so honored that we just get to sow a small seed into it, Lord. We love you. We honor you. It's our joy to give to you. And Holy Spirit, help us be generous givers, Lord. Generous givers and faithful, excited, joyful givers, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you're in the room, you can text GIVE to the number on your screen, or there is a QR code. If you also want to just give by envelopes or cash, you can hold your hands up, and one of our ushers will come and give you an envelope right now. If you're in the overflow as well, there should be ushers in the overflow. If you're watching online and you want to get in on this harvest, we invite you to give as well. There should be a number on your screen, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. 
weakness, our weak bodies to the Lord. I want you for a moment, uh, as I was sitting there during that offering clip, I began to feel the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon me in a very special way and begin to speak to me. It's time that arenas fill in Southern California. I said, it's time that arenas fill in Southern California. I'm gonna say it again until someone with the faith to grab it will agree with me. It's time that arenas fill in Southern California. Oh, just, just we get to pray in the spirit for a moment. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. The Lord's moving now. It's always the best wine for last. Thank you, Lord, for what you'll do in this region. That you would draw your people, not a speaker, you. That people would come from around the world. that there be such a holy anointing in those arenas that it'd feel like a home meeting, though there'd be thousands around. Thousands, tens of thousands. Please, Jess. Daniel Park, would you step out here for a second? Come stand right here. our team to come, you too, Pastor, come around him. I want you to gently pray in the Spirit, people, please. When I said I wanted to come to this area, I called Daniel. I've been preaching in his church for over a decade, I think. I haven't been in a while, but I asked him in Irvine, when did I start coming? He said, you basically planted the church with me. <laughs> but Daniel immediately reached out to this house. I think he brought multiple leaders here, 15 of his leaders. Many people from his church are here. His wife is babysitting the children of the leaders so that the leaders could come tonight. And you never outgive God, Daniel. Never. Everything changes tonight. Yes. Yes. Everything changes. Yes. Y'all get your hands on him, babe, you and Lily. Tonight, a holy anointing for healing will come upon you. your church will see the wonders of God that you've longed for. Many who are weak and even crippled will come in. And what you've longed to see, what you've been striving for, everything shifts now. There would be an undeniable touch of the Lord You guys just pray. And if I were, this is what I would do if I were you. I'd be praying for him because God will touch you. That's what I would do if I were in that crowd. Father, let the winds shift in his church. Let the winds shift. Let the season change. Burn true north into his heart and let him double down on the pursuit. Tonight, let him feel tangibly 
your healing anointing. And strengthen his body, Lord, for the days ahead. No more weakness, no more tired, sleepless nights, no more tired days. But as Elijah ran when the angel fed him, tonight as he receives Holy Communion, quicken him to run this race. I'm going to say something in faith. This is not cliche for me. Anoint him tonight. Yes. Amen. Truly anoint him. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Everything changes, Daniel. Everything changes. Carry your cross. Carry your cross through the misunderstanding. If people leave because of it, let them go. Let them go. The stripes of Jesus are too valuable to waste. You pray for the sick. If it offends your greatest leader, you pray for the sick there. Be a faithful servant of the Lord. Be the deliverer of a good report that Christ has overcome. Hallelujah. Come here, Judy. Let's just close our eyes for the next few moments and worship the Lord before we receive communion. Sing that again, El Shaddai.
just the voices now one more time El Shaddai again softly one more time El Shaddai El Shaddai El Shaddai El Yonah Adonai Age to age you're still the same your eyes and stand there in his presence now. Lord, tonight we come before your body and blood, seeing your worth and your beauty. We confess our sin, Lord, before we partake. Many of your people in this room are weak and weary and sick. And your word says you went about doing good because your father anointed you and you destroyed the works of the devil when you went about healing. Your holy word says it's by your stripes we are healed. everyone's attention on Jesus now. He's all that matters now. Lord, that leper asked you after you taught that wonderful sermon on the mount. As you came down the mountain, that unclean leper said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And without hesitating, you answered, I am willing. Be cleansed. So Jesus, we offer our bodies tonight as we prepare to receive your body and blood. Take our sickness, take our weakness, and lay your loving hand upon our bodies. May every pain and every disease every tumor and every growth, every cataract, every glaucoma, blindness, deafness, may all of them bow their knee to the wonder of your presence, O righteous King. And your word says, Lord, that there were none feeble among them when they left Egypt that night. And I feel this strongly, that many of you are just tired in your bodies and you don't know why you're just weak and the scripture says there were none feeble none weak in a nation of three million people all because they partook of the Passover meal they feasted on the lamb and the lamb's strength filled their bodies this meal 
friends, unlocks the power of the covenant. It is a covenant meal. Let's take the bread, just hold it. Stand there in stillness, looking at Jesus. Miss Kuhlman used to say, miracles happen when Jesus becomes more real to us than our sickness. Just look at the Lord. Lord, as we hold the bread, your body, in our hands, we remember your suffering. We remember how they stripped you naked so that we would be clothed in your glory. We remember how they spat upon your face and disfigured it so that we would be recognized before the throne. We remember tonight, Lord, how they pulled the beard from your beautiful face. We remember, Lord, and we say thank you. We remember, Jesus, how they beat your back and striped it so that we would be healed tonight. We remember how they mocked you and put a crown on your head, a crown of thorns. You who traded heaven's diadem for a crown of thorns. We remember so that we would have the mind of Christ, so that our thoughts would be healed. The Lord rebuke every emotional sickness in this house tonight. Everyone watching in their homes and hospitals and dorm rooms and Around the world, the Lord rebuke your emotional trauma, your scattered mind. The Lord heal you. We remember that crown that redeemed our mind as you wore the curse so that we would be free in our thoughts to love you. We remember. Yeah, play those strings, guys. We remember your hands that were pierced so that our work would be purified. And we remember, Lord, your feet that were pierced so that we could walk holy. And we remember your side. Oh, I pray you're getting lost in his presence. We remember your side that was run through and pierced so that we would be washed and the power of the Spirit, the Word, and your holy blood. And when your side opened, you showed us the way to your heart, Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. And as your arms were outstretched on that cross, you declared to the world that you're the one who longs to hold us and wrap your arms around us. Now, Lord, I ask that as we receive your holy body and blood, that you would walk through these aisles like you walked the shores of Galilee. And that even now as I speak, your word, not my own, but your word, that your power would begin to course through the bodies of everyone watching and listening, that they would tangibly feel the power of your Spirit. And whatever that river touches comes to life, your Word says. Let the river of God begin to flow, wonderful Holy Spirit. Bring the sick healing and bring the dead to life. All that's dying in their bodies, all the pain, Bring it back to life. Bring broken hearts back to life. You are the one who heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. Let the balm of Gilead begin to flow. Lord, we lift the bread, which you lifted. And we lift the bread because you were suspended and lifted on the cross. And our eyes are beholding the beauty of Christ crucified tonight. 
As we break the bread, we remember how your body was torn. And let every broken body, as this body is broken, let every broken body be made whole and one. As we receive tonight, let your power flood every sick and weak body. The Lord rebuke every weakness and every disease in Jesus' name. Receive in faith. Mm. Hallelujah. Many of you already are already beginning. I'm feeling the power of God myself. And I don't even need a, a healing. Many of you are feeling his blessed power. Give all your attention to him. Heal your people. Would you take the cup? Tonight, in 2023, right here in Southern California, we declare that there is still wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. There is still wonder-working power in the blood. When you said this is the cup of the covenant in my blood, take it and drink it for the remission of sin. And you told us as often as we eat and drink the cup, that we declare your death until you return. And so tonight, Lord, as simple little children, we declare Christ, the God of the ages. Oh, I feel the power of God flowing. Christ, the God of the ages, has come, put on a body, wrapped in flesh, the first and the last was nailed to the tree. Oh, hear me well tonight. And by death he has conquered death. And death is no more, therefore sickness is no more. Death has been flogged, the tyrant has been flogged and defeated. Jesus, with your death, you destroyed its power in our life. And so tonight I plead the blood as your word says, when the enemy approached the throne to get to Job, he said, I can't get to him. You've placed a hedge about him. And so tonight, I plead the blood over every weak body, over every broken mind, over every broken heart, over every broken family, over every broken marriage, over every broken pastor, over every broken soul, over every broken cell. I plead the blood. And this blood speaks a better word, better than that of Abel. But this blood does not speak condemnation. It does not speak vengeance. It speaks redemption, spirit, soul, and body. Beloved, I wish above all things that you'd prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Tonight, Holy Father, we plead the blood of your beautiful Son over everyone and to receive the cup of the covenant tonight. May it unlock the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Receive. Receive and just stand there in his presence. It is so wonderful right now. Is so wonderful right now. If you need a healing in your body, just lift your hands to the Lord and say, Lord, heal me right here in your presence. You see your children, Lord. Let your healing power flow. Let your healing power flow. Even now, let your healing power flow. And as you stand there tonight, 
Many of you feel the power of God and you came in with pain, sickness, stiffness. Put your hand there by faith on that part of your body. Many of you have already been healed just by receiving communion. Many of you were healed during worship. In the moment you feel or don't feel that wonderful power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to just begin moving by faith, moving by faith. Do something you could not do. Heal your people, Father. For your glory, heal your people. The moment you feel like the Lord is healing you or has healed you, you feel his blessed power going through your body and either the symptoms are leaving or they're completely gone or the pain is gone. I just want you to begin lifting your hands up in the air and begin waving. The moment you feel that, oh, thank you, Jesus. Wave both hands over your head. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Thank you, precious Father. Oh, blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name. The Lord's doing more. I mean, there's, there's so many hands, but there's more. If, 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 if the Lord hasn't healed you yet, just ask him again. Ask him again right here in his presence. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed, blessed be your name. All pain goes now. All limitation goes now in Jesus' name. All bondage goes now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every ounce of it goes in Jesus' name. Leave every spirit of affliction and trauma and the wounds of abuse. Go now in Jesus' name. Leave. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, I'm feeling something tonight I have not felt for healing in this region in a decade. May the power of the Holy Ghost flow. Let the power of your stripes flow. Get out into the aisle if you have to right now. The rest of you, if you don't need a healing, just pray softly in the spirit. Get out into the aisle. Uh, many of you who feel like you need to test it out. Move your legs, move your back, move your arms. Lord, clear vision in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody's got like a, an ear issue in the right ear. You actually felt the ear pop. You, you felt it pop, it cleared. I don't know if it was a deafness or an infection, but you felt it pop. And now you're hearing better. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be completely whole. Keep praying in the spirit, just everyone in the spirit. Uh, someone to my left here has had an issue in the throat. To my left, it's been a consistent nagging pain on the throat. May the blessed presence of the Lord just come upon you like a salve from heaven like the balm of Gilead. Is there not a physician there, the Lord says? Is there not healing in worship? Receive, receive. Receive. Thank you, Lord. You say, how do I receive, Michael? Just like a little child. You say, I don't feel anything. Just move by faith. Hallelujah. I give you all the glory. All the glory. I want our team to bring Pastor uh, Sam here, right where Daniel stood. Come stand around him, team. Lord, you teach us with your hand. Clothe him tonight in a healing anointing. May his eldership team flow in a powerful healing ministry and may you give him wisdom to train them may your power your light shine upon him make him a beacon of light and a beacon of hope now clothe him tonight in your tangible glory and never let him be the same Give him compassion for the sick in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to see hands again after praying the second time. If the Lord has touched your body, you feel like he's healed you, or you feel like he's healing you right now in the moment, I want you to put both hands up over your head again. 
and just begin to wave at me. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I need help. I'm going to need a... Who, who's going to help me? Amy, I want you to find three or four of them right here. That's if the Lord has healed you, not something you're hoping for. I just want us to stand for five more minutes. I want to hear some of these. Actually, you can sit unless you're going to share a testimony. What happened? Uh huh. And since I've stepped away from the game. Are you a circuit rider? Yes. Okay. I can't see your face, but you sound like one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so I've had a plantar bruise on the bottom of my foot uh -huh. for about three, four years now, maybe longer. Uh huh. And it's kind of been, I've been to a foot doctor to get it checked, got some medication, got it fixed, and over time started playing. It got better, but uh -huh. it started to come back a little bit. And so I just started to dwell in the pain a little bit. Just Did like, you oh, have pain it's back. Tonight? I had pain tonight as I was standing and worshiping uh -huh. earlier in the set. What happened? Um, the Lord healed me. I just started praying. As you said, touch my foot. When did he heal you? Just now and then, whenever you said to start touching the part, I sat down and started holding that part of my foot and started to put more weight where that plantar bruise is on the outside of my did foot. Did you feel anything when you prayed? I felt at first before I started, before I started touching it, a sensation almost like numbing. Uh -huh. And then I just started to feel almost like where the bruise was the pain started to subside and spread out of my foot. And wow. so I just started to test it out. How long have you been in that pain? Uh, probably almost 10 years. 10 years. And I just played through it. And you felt the pain leave tonight? I felt the pain leave tonight. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Before you go to the next one, Amy, one day I was playing golf in Orange County, which is always holy. And... <laughs> This pastor looked at me. He said, you know, your message of Jesus, I think it could go around the world, but you've just stop praying for the sick. And I thought, what kind of advice is this? He said, if you keep moving in the spirit like that, it's going to affect the message. It's going to restrict it. It's a massive ministry this man has. And I said, well, he said, your generation doesn't want the healing power of God. And I thought, well, I said, well, what do we want? And he said, hope. And I said, what about hope for the sick? I'm so grateful to see young people being healed and being used of God. <laughs> Keep going, Amy. And do you know what? As we continue to take these testimonies, it happens every time we pray at church. The Lord keeps touching his people. So if he hasn't healed you yet, you just sit there in his presence and celebrate these testimonies. Yes, this is what Pastor Sam saw in his dream. He saw people being healed throughout this building. And you know what this building is called? The Miracle Center. Perfect, perfect. Yes, ma'am, what happened? Hi, um, well I had a car accident a few months ago and um, I wrecked my, my ankle and I, I have a, a, a blood clot, a number of blood clots in my right leg that they've been monitoring now for almost three months. Mm. And um, it really hurts when you stretch. And I have no more pain. I'm stretching. How long I'm has that been? It's like totally gone. How long have you been in pain? They, they found it on June the 5th. And uh -huh. they've done about four ultrasounds because I can't take blood thinners. And, and you've had it, constant it, pain since then? Yeah, it make, it's sore because when you have blood clots in your lower calf, you cannot stretch without it mm. really hurting and there's no pain when I stretch right now. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Lord. Guys, let's quickly find our seats over there. Quickly. Don't don't move around right now. You say it's ten fifteen. Who cares? The Lord's moving. I've always been amused by people who pray for a move of the Spirit. The Lord starts moving and then we don't like it. So it's comical. Yes. So I had a mass in my right breast since 2020, uh -huh. and a couple months ago, I'm five months pregnant, so I wanted it removed uh -huh. before my baby comes, uh -huh. and I got it rechecked because it causes a lot of pain every morning, every night, yeah. throughout the day, and it's gone. It's the size of a tennis ball. They Wait, told hold on, me hold on. I want to hear that again. You walked in with that thing? Mm-hmm. 
And I don't feel any pain. But what, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so it was the size of a tennis ball? It's the size of a tennis ball. When you came in the building? Yes. And now, so you'd be able to feel it? Mm-hmm. And you checked for it and it's gone? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you, if you just sit there and stare at me, I don't know, I might do something. Guys, can we thank the Lord? Thank you, Lord. The size of a tennis ball, you walked in with it. Would you stand back up? I want to see you. When did that, when did you feel it leave? Uh, earlier when you said that if you came here for healing, you'll feel electricity to your body. Why are you crying? I mean, I know you're thankful, but what are you feeling? I feel the vibration of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what? Can you explain what you're feeling to the people? The vibration of the, the Holy Spirit just comes upon you and it just makes everything just like pure and clean. <laughs> That's right. You got it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to thank him if y'all don't because I didn't touch her. I didn't do anything to her. This has nothing to do with me. Did it happen, you say, during communion? When we came into the front to oh. I, me and my husband. You came, came forward here. and it disappeared? Yeah. Where's your husband? Here. Is she telling the truth? <laughs> yes, she is telling the truth. Amen. Would you stand up too? So, how long has she had that? Since 2020, it, um, we actually went to the doctor to get it checked out last month, and you can see it. You can clearly see it bulging out of her breast every morning, and every once in a while, depending on how the hormones were, it would hurt and be a little more stiffer. Hard, okay, real hard. Really hard. So this is. And did, when that happened, did she tell you, hey, this thing's gone? No, I'm, I'm barely hearing about it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, you know, the key to a good marriage is communication. You've got to talk. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, take this couple and clothe them and use them to pray for people who need your touch. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How many of you sense the Lord's presence here? Yeah. Next, Amy. Lift your hands if you're near Amy and the Lord's healed you. Anybody on that side? Anybody on that side there? There were many hands up, so if the Lord healed you, just put your hand up and, and uh, so Amy can see you. Now they're afraid. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron. Aaron and Amy are married. <laughs> and look, they're like uh, worship leaders and they take healing testimonies. What, what happened? Well, basically, uh, well, I have surgery done. That mic, we need that mic. I have, I have surgery done Amy, go over there and give him that mic, please. Your husband doesn't know how to use a mic. <laughs> so I had, a, I had surgery done in, in my stomach. I have this, this big scar right here. And wow. um, I walked in here with a slouch. Um, after I recovered from the, from the surgery, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stretch and stand up straight. And as soon as uh, you said, start putting your hands up. When I, was the surgery? Uh, July 2nd. July 2nd. So recently? Recently, yes. Okay. And, uh, Why did you have surgery? I had a ruptured uh, ulcer okay. in, in my stomach. And um, I mean, I've recovered fine, but I, I've, been, I've been carrying this slouch for, for a few weeks already. But You've been like bent over? Yeah, and... and <laughs> Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. What, what did you feel tonight? 
Well, I felt the presence of the Lord come upon me. Explain, and explain just, what you just felt. Just like she said, I felt, I felt electricity. I kept moving back and forth, and uh, I just, I felt the presence of the Lord all over me. And then, then, did the pain leave, and you could straighten when you felt the Lord's presence? But pretty much, yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah Why I am I standing stand next to him straight. in a shot? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, say that again. I can stand up straight now. I'm, you gosh. I, I was walking like this. All the pain is gone? I have no pain. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are you. Oh, come on. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Anyone else over there? Anyone else over there near them? Huh? Oh, Tasha did. And and one here. Hun a hundred hands went up, and now when you'll have to talk, you put them down. What happened, Tosh? Stand up, yeah. Back arm was hurting, and I used to see all doing uh -huh. kickboxing. Yeah. And I literally, my knee has been in so much pain for months where I could barely even stand up, let alone move, and I've had to wear a knee brace. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm sick and tired of being pain because it's been bothering me all night, and all of a sudden, I just felt my knee pop. The pain's gone. When did it happen? Tonight? During oh, communion? or Right after we took communion when you said, right. ask for your healing. So I was like, Lord, I'm kind of sick and tired of being in this pain. That's my sister-in-law. <laughs> and so I can move my knee. That's how you know it's real when your yeah. sister-in-law gets healed. No, I haven't been able preaching. to like move, bend. Like my knee's been in so much pain for months. And I can, like, I, I feel fine. Wow. So, thank you, Come Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this was your dream, Pastor. This was the dream you had. I'm going to take two more. Yeah, come on, be bold. Don't keep the testimony to yourself. You can't do that. That's illegal. It really is. You can't touch the glory. Do not. Yes, yes, sir. Um, so about a couple of weeks ago, uh, I've been trying really hard to get some weight off and felt like I kind of overdid it in the gym one day. and. So one night I went to bed and I was just like shaking all night and I, th I thought it was my heart rate. And so went to the hospital, got everything checked out. They said, your heart's perfectly fine. Um, it's just, you just, you're just having an anxiety attack. And I was like, I'm not really all that stressed out. He's like, sometimes you don't have to be. And, uh, but I was kind of worried like, oh man, I did something to my heart or like, I don't know, but, um, so anyways, tonight, I just, I've, I felt so much peace in my Praise heart. Praise God. So much peace, like I've never felt before. And the shaking's gone. That is so precious. That is so precious. Let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Yeah, someone got brave on that side. Yes, ma'am. So um, in 2020, uh, uh, my back was injured uh, where my spinal cord, part of it got crushed. Okay, how? So um, I was, I'm a bus driver uh -huh. for the city of Los Angeles Metro. And, uh, God bless you. <laughs> how do you drive a bus in LA? So, Can't even drive a golf cart around here. <laughs> so the bus has... Uh, it's called bellows. It's basically shocks would be on a car. Um, it went out in the front of the bus, and so the bus was bouncing like a a, a car that's uh, yeah with hydraulics. Yeah, so the, the front switches. of the bus was bound. Yeah, like that. That's old school '90s term. <laughs> Anyways, and go ahead. I had an air seat, and so the air seat would hit the the uh, bottom of the the. Uh, seat would hit the floor uh -huh. so I let all the air out but I was still feeling the pain like hitting the bus hitting on the ground like even worse uh -huh. so I had to let the air back in and try to control it with my legs but in the midst of it um, I had to drive like that for an over an hour and it ended up uh, crushing part of my spinal cord wow so you uh, went to the doctor and they said that yeah yeah okay. I got an MRI 
Mm -hmm. um, so I end up at initially having surgery. So I had like a piece of like titanium in my back. Wow. And um, it, it would hurt. I was sort of like the gentleman that was just talking about being forward. Uh -huh. um, and it would subside sometimes, but then it would come right back. Uh -huh. So when you told us to, um, after drinking the communion, uh -huh. I start feeling the sensation, and I'm like, okay. What did you feel? It felt like electricity. On your and back? Yeah, yeah. And, but I could still feel a little pain, like it was twisting, and, you know, I still could feel a little bit of pain. So you said, if, you don't, if you're not um, feeling completely healed, just keep sitting there, it'll happen. <laughs> so I said, okay, kept sitting here. And as I kept sitting here, Again, the feeling came over me again. What? Explain that feeling. That, that feeling, it felt like, um, it was like a tingly, really tingly. And um, after that, I didn't feel anything. So Praise I didn't feel, God. I didn't feel anything. How and I long started twisting like I could twist. I couldn't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't. Not without pain. I don't feel no How pain. It's been, has it been three years since you've been able to do that? It's been, it's been since, yes, since, 2000, since uh, February of 2020. Gosh. Guys, let's stand and give the Lord <laughs> praise. Come on, give the Lord praise. Hey, Nick, Nick. Nick Brent. Nick Brent. No, Nick Brent. Everyone lift your hands. Come up here, stand with me. This is Nick, this is Christy's son. Nick is leading circuit riders now beautifully. Grab a mic, you got one? You're pretty good, huh? you know what you're doing. I'm gonna pray. Actually, I want Nick to pray. And then I'm gonna pray a final blessing over you before we dismiss. Nick, pray, pray whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Holy Spirit, we honor your presence in this place. Yes, Lord. We give you the glory that you're yes, due. all of it. We thank you for your finishing work. God, we pray tonight that you would finish even right now. Every body waiting for their last healing, I just feel, but Lord Jesus, I just ask that you would heal autoimmune diseases. Yes, Lord. Miraculous things, Lord, that we do not understand, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would heal bodies that are undiagnosed and mystery diseases that doctors cannot figure out. We pray that you would touch them, Lord, as they go tonight. And Lord, finally, we agree, as part of the body of Southern California, we agree, Lord, for a Jesus movement in this yes. region. We receive the word that Michael gave of arenas being filled with young people, healing breaking forth, the gospel going forth. Jesus, we respond to that prophetic word and we yes. grab a hold of it for this region. Jesus, we thank you that Southern California is a movement generating region. And God, we ask that you would generate a new movement of your spirit that would touch this generation, Lord, and shake America. Amen. Just put your hand up and I want you to grab that word. I felt when he said it, Lord, I wanna prophesy, Jesus. I wanna receive it, Jesus. God, fill us with courage to give ourselves to you, Lord, for the sake of a Jesus movement. Man, stay up here with me, bud. In 2005, I, had, I think somewhere in there, I had a dream. I was at Pastor Benny's house. I walked down. Uh, I used to walk down and just go sit by the water. And one night at his house, I had a dream. And I was standing uh, on the coastline of Southern California. And this huge tidal wave tsunami started coming at me. And I thought it was going to kill me. And rather than kill me, when the water hit me, it filled me with life filled me with peace, filled me with joy, filled me with that 
wonderful, wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit. And I believe, I believe that Southern California's greatest days in God are ahead. Yes. And may you carry the blessed glory of God. May all of you be clothed in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And may every heart burn for Jesus like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. Let's give the Lord praise. Oh, oh, for those of you who are rabid, hungry addicts, <laughs> and you need more of God, we will be at Atrock in Pasadena on Friday night. Join us. Love you very much. God bless you. Michael and Jess here. We are standing in the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing, and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in his beauty and the majesty of his creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for his people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus Image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10:42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into Children's Church, 
to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary, depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. May millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you, we love you, Jesus is beautiful.